Hi everyone, Suzanne here. Cage me LaFalcia, welcome to Ireland. I am so excited to get into these levels. These are the ones I have been looking forward to for such a long time. It is the first time in the Tomb Raider series that we get to visit Ireland. We visit Ireland as little Lara or young Lara, however you want to say it. And she is my absolute favorite. I think she's absolutely adorable. So of course I had to do a cosplay for the occasion. So we're gonna start this off with a cutscene and let's just get into it. This night reminds me of the time out of Canusi. Winston's home? Indeed, yes. The staff had taken leave due to flooding. Lara, back when she was a slip of a girl, was staying with Winston and his wife. It was her that contacted me, as a matter of fact. Some trouble out on one of the islands. Weird lights, manifestations, that sort of thing. I thought I might be able to help. It was on a hellish night like this when I arrived. Evening, Winston. And how would I be able to help? So, people have seen these apparitions out on the island. There is talk of little else in the village, Bram. I'm doing all I can to keep this gossip from Lara. I, you would be a wise man. It would be unwise for her curiosity to draw her to that place. And you have some idea of what it could be? To be frank with you, no. But as the devil finds work for idle hands, I've spoken with Father Finnegan and have a boat chartered for the crossing late on this very evening. Good Lord, Bram. You have not chosen the evening for it. I have my faith to protect me, Winston. Be careful. I fear on that island it's what you cannot see that will hurt you, Bram. Time to get to the bottom of this, old friend. Okay, so we have quite a bit to go through. So yet again, grab your tea, your popcorn, whatever you would like, because we are going to delve into it. We check back in with the three men in the study. Father Patrick says that this night reminds him of his time in Conacy. Winston's home, Charles Kane asks. Father Patrick says that yes, when Lara was a very young girl and Croft Manor had flooded, Lara had gone to stay with Winston and his wife in the village that Winston is originally from. So I know I went over Winston's backstory in my Tomb Raider 3 Croft Manor video. I'll link it below if you do want to check it out. And I also did a cosplay for that as well. <laughs> but I'll just very briefly recap on Winston's background here. So Winston was born on February 7th, 1924. So Lara and Winston's birthdays are actually very close together. They're not the same year, obviously, but his is on the 7th of February and Lara's is on the 14th of February. So Winston was born in the Irish village of Conacy, Ireland. Now, this village doesn't actually exist. It is purely fictional and exists only in the Tomb Raider universe. So Winston fought in World War II and was honorably discharged after he was wounded in battle. He then returned to the village of Conacy and worked as a gamekeeper with his father. It's during this work that he met Lord Henshinley Croft during a pheasant shooting excursion that he had organized. So for anyone who's not aware, Lord Henshinley Croft is Lara's father in the original Tomb Raider timeline. Lord Henshinley Croft then personally requested that Winston come and work at Croft Manor as their butler. So he obviously liked him so much and thought he was so good at his job and stuff that he wanted him to move to England and work on the Croft estate. And this is the first mention we get of Winston having a wife. So I couldn't find much info on her, just that yes, Winston does have a wife and she lives in the village of Conacy. So I don't know if Winston 
you know, lives and works at Croft Manor and then maybe he would go home occasionally to visit his wife or something. I'm not 100% sure how that works, but yes, Winston is married and his wife is at least alive when this story takes place. <laughs> and yes, if Winston is Irish and grew up in Ireland, I've no idea why he has a English accent. I just presume he picked it up working in Croft Manor at some point. <laughs> so yes, in this story, Croft Manor has flooded for some reason and Lara is staying with Winston and his wife in their Irish village of Connacy. Father Patrick says that Lara contacted him while she was staying with Winston about some trouble out on one of the nearby islands. She mentioned that there were weird lights and manifestations. A bolt of lightning strikes outside of Croft Manor and we then flash back to 1982 when our story takes place. Now, if we do the maths here, Lara was born in 1968, so in 1982, that makes her 14 years old. Father Patrick says it was a hellish night when he arrived in the village of Connacy, but that he thought he might be able to help with the situation. We see young Lara in a bedroom at Winston's cottage. She is preparing to change for bed, but is interrupted by a noise. And now I feel like I have to mention this here really briefly. That scene that they included has always bothered me. It's always seemed extremely inappropriate to have that there. As we just said, Lara is supposed to be 14 at this point, a child. And I just feel like that scene of her about to change and stuff is just so unnecessary, so inappropriate. That was just not not okay to include, in my opinion. Lara inspects the noise and it is Father Patrick arriving to the cottage. Both he and Winston take a seat at the kitchen table. Father Patrick asks Winston about these apparitions that people have seen out on the island, which is called the Black Isle. Winston says that people rarely talk about anything else in the village and that it's been difficult to keep the gossip from Lara. Well, clearly he wasn't successful in that. Lara opens her door to listen to their conversation. Father Patrick says it would be unwise for Lara's curiosity to draw her to the island. Winston asks if Father Patrick has any idea what could be on that island. He replies that he doesn't, but he has spoken to his colleague, Father Finnegan, and they have chartered a boat to the island this very evening to find out. Winston urges Father Patrick to be careful, and the priest says that he has his faith to protect him. As Father Patrick stands up, Lara climbs out her bedroom window. We see Father Patrick in his boat crossing the water to the Black Isle. As Father Patrick waves to Winston, we see Lara peer out from under the tarp of the boat. Also, just to mention here, I found out in my research that Father Finnegan, Father Patrick's colleague, is the one who's driving the boat. So the boat docks and after Father Patrick disembarks, Father Finnegan drives off. He'll be back in the morning to collect Father Patrick. The priest opens a concealed door in the rock face and enters a passageway as Lara watches him from nearby. So I've no idea how she snuck off the boat without him noticing, but she managed to. And here I just wanted to give some info on Father Patrick. So Father Bram Patrick Dunstan was born in 1954. So he's a very young priest. He's only 28 when this happens. <laughs> and Father Patrick is the Croft family priest. And there's just a little bit of a bio about him on Lara Croft Wiki that I'm just going to read out. So Father Patrick was an orphan raised and trained in a monastery. He left the monastery to travel the Amazon basin as a missionary. Father Patrick pursues an interest in the paranormal after being exposed to a mysterious incident in Haiti. He returned to Northern Ireland and took up his position as local priest for Connacy. Now there, I'm not 100% sure if they mean Northern Ireland, the country, or just the northern part of the island of Ireland. So they don't make it exactly clear what they mean. So I guess we can just assume that it's just the northern part of the island of Ireland. 
We're not exactly 100% sure where this village is meant to be located. In his short time in the village, he became close friends with Winston. And although returning to his travels, would return often to see his companion and henceforth to eventually meet Lara Croft. And finally, just a little bit of info on this mysterious Black Isle, which of course is also fictional. So the Black Isle was abandoned long ago due to its supernatural inhabitants. The only thing that remains of civilization on the island is abandoned buildings that are all in ruins. Okay, so I think that's enough info for the moment. That's enough to kind of just give us a general idea of what's going on and get us started. So let's just get into the game. Okay, so here we are. I have no idea how we got here, but we just did. So we just have to accept it. <laughs> The sky here is actually really, really beautiful. Um, they did some really nice effects here. And of course the rain effect because, you know, it's Ireland, it has to be raining. Even though in real life now, it hasn't rained in Ireland in a really long time. It's a bit concerning. I like the rain. Okay, so first things first, we have to traverse this massive thing, but I'm trying to remember um, oh, I think I just jumped in here, actually. I'm trying to ooh, remember where the secret is here. Oh, okay. And yeah, because we're little Lara, little 14-year-old Lara, um, obviously she is just at this point in her life um, a normal schoolgirl. So she's not the Tomb Raider yet or anything. So we have no guns and no weapons for these levels. So it's a nice change. It's something different for Tomb Raider. Okay. Should be up. These bats are the most irritating things in this um these set of levels. Oops. Well, we have to go down here anyway to get some pickups, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be doing a Tomb Raider marathon today. I made a community post about it because just because it's easier to play all the levels together, especially when I'm, you know, doing a cosplay. I mean, this isn't like a hugely complicated or time-consuming cosplay by any means but um yeah it's just easier to to do it all in one go so that's what we're going to be doing oh no how do i get that oh maybe that's flat hang on can i jump here oh i can can i do this yay Right. And um, I found the research for these levels so fascinating. Oh, I can't jump up there. So fascinating. Anytime I thought I was done, I would find more. I would find more info or something else that I wanted to know. So um, yeah, it was it was really, really interesting. Oh look, she's so cute. Oh, I can't jump up there. So yeah, that's all you're gonna hear me say for the whole time is how flipping cute she is. She's adorable. Okay, so I think I just go the, oh, for God's sake. I think I just go the same way again. And I think they got the atmosphere of, uh, oh my god, no! I should really stop talking while I do stuff like this. Um, but I think they got the atmosphere of one of the Irish islands really, really well in this game um, because we do have a lot of very small islands 
um, off the coast and some are inhabited and some aren't. So some have people, some have extremely small communities um, and stuff. So the islands around Ireland are fascinating. Um, and I just, yeah, I love the atmosphere that they created. I think it's it's really cool and really creepy that they have this one as abandoned. So yeah, I like it a lot. Right, I think there's something down here. Yeah. I think they give you a lot of medipacks here because we've nothing to defend ourselves with. for my troubled spirit. Come closer, for you are safe while I am hung like so much butcher's meat. Who are you? Who? Mm, for it is more like what? Condemned to wander between the kingdoms of man and that of the elementals. <laughs> but I must be swift in my request. <laughs> For they watch and wait to once more draw me back into the darkness. Request? My heart, girl. They have hidden my petrified heart in the roots of this, the world tree, down under the watchful gaze of the dragon Nidhogg. Find this, my child and return it to its rightful resting place. <laughs> and you shall be rewarded. And why on earth should I trust you? <laughs> Not on earth, girl. In between. <laughs> My soul is gone. And how it fares, nobody knows. And nobody cares. <laughs> that flash was bright. <laughs> Lara enters the gallows tree clearing and is startled by the ringing of a church bell. Oh yeah, I don't think I said at the start actually that this level is called gallows tree. <laughs> As Lara approaches the tree, there is a flash of light and a rotting corpse appears hanging from a branch. The hanging man tells Lara to come closer, that he has a gift for her. Oh hell no, I would have been out of there so fast. Lara refuses. The hanging man laughs and tells Lara to not be afraid that his rotting body is just a vessel for his troubled spirit and that she's safe while he hangs. Lara asks who he is. The hanging man says he is condemned to wander between the kingdoms of men and that of the elements. The hanging man says he needs to ask Lara something quickly before he is drawn back into the darkness. He asks Lara to find his petrified heart hidden in the world tree. We will talk about the world tree a bit later on in the video. If Lara finds his heart and returns it to its rightful resting place, she will be rewarded. Lara asks why on earth she would trust him. The hanging man says not on earth, but in between, as his soul is gone and no one cares. With a laugh, he vanishes in a flash of light. And just a bit of extra info on the Hanging Man. So the Hanging Man is a demon. He is trapped on the Black Isle after his heart was taken from him and hidden in the roots of the World Tree. He is now trapped between the living world and the plane of elements. 
Okay, so yeah, essentially we have to find his heart that is hidden in the roots of this tree. So we need to go underground and find where the roots are, get his heart back, and um, yeah, put it where it belongs, basically. So that's our task. And I'm just going to get a secret here. And then I forget where it is we step, but something's gonna appear here. Yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> These stupid, annoying things. Look at that. What the hell? Okay, so this, this will punch us. Yeah, see, it just attacks and scratches. It's a big meanie. So. It can't come up here, can it? Oh, it can. Get away. Get away from me. So rude. Hang on a second. <laughs> I'd like to see it get up here. Stupid thing. Right. So this is described as an imp. And imps kind of appear a lot in Irish folklore. I think I read also German folklore and maybe Scottish as well. I'm sure a lot of countries um, in their folklore have imps, but they're kind of the main ones that just stood out in my research. So imps are described as mischievous more than seriously threatening. So they are wild and uncontrollable, much like fairies. They were often portrayed as lonely in search of human attention and loved to play pranks. So I think traditionally in folklore, imps were mainly just pains in the ass, really. Um, you know, they, they caused trouble, they played pranks, they made your life difficult, but there was nothing like seriously evil about them. And I think that is what they've gone for in this game. Now I know they do like scratch us and take life away, but again, mainly it's just them being annoying. We can't kill them, we can't get rid of them, so we just have to avoid them. And a little bit of trivia. So in 2019, Tomb Raider The Dark Angel Symphony, which was a project where a team of people, including Peter Connolly, who composed the music for Tomb Raider 4, 5, and Angel of Darkness, they worked really hard on this project where they basically re-recorded all of that music. That group revealed that Peter Connolly, the music composer, actually provides the sound effects for these enemies. So I thought that was really cool and really funny. Okay, so let's, let's move on now. Where did it go? You go away. Go away. You annoying thing. Like, they're kind of cute, maybe, the first time you see them, but they just get super annoying very quickly. Although, honestly, I find these bats more annoying and they're absolutely everywhere. Okay, so all we have to do is slide down, I'm pretty sure. Ugh. Um. Oh no, took a wrong turn. Pretty sure we just keep going all the way to the end. All the way to the surface. Okay, and so this is pretty cool. So this is, you know, an abandoned part of the, the old village here. So what I love most about these levels is how much thought they put into the story. Now, in my personal opinion, I think they should have gone much scarier with the story. I think I said in my 
Q&A that I did, like I would have loved to have seen them explore truly terrifying things in Irish folklore, like for instance, banshees and stuff like that. I think they could have made these levels really terrifying. But, you know, they are quite scary and creepy as they are. So I do really like them. Okay, so I think we can just jump in here. Um, okay, I think we, we swim up again. Uh, okay. So what we picked up there was a rubber tube, which we need. Here. Oh god. What is that? <gasps> Rats! Oh okay. Go Lara. Go go go. It's so frustrating to have all these things where you just can't fight back and they're draining your health. Okay. So let's let's just run run over here. Oh my god, he's right there! Get away! Get away! I did not think he would be in here! Oh god. Okay, keep running. Keep running. Pick this up. And- Ah! Whoa. Get away! It's so cool though, all the ruins and abandoned buildings. Get away. Ha, take that. Okay, so now we're going to use this pitchfork with the rubber tube to make a slingshot. It's so funny. Okay, so, you know, it's the most effective slingshot in the world. Okay, so I know that the iron clapper is there, but I don't actually want to pick it up just yet because I want to see the cutscene of what happens when you don't have it. So I will go back for it. Uh, but yeah, this is a bunch of... What would you call them? Tombs? Crypt? mausoleums I'm not 100% sure honestly what these are supposed to be Ireland wise but anyway I presume they're just the crypts where people here would bury their dead Oh, she won't pick it up when she's holding the torch. Okay. Um. Right. So it feels a bit better to have some light anyway. That was much further than I thought it was going to be. Oh well. What is that? What's that noise? What's happening? Oh, get, get away. Get away. Oh, get away. Get away from me. Oh, this is a 
this is a secret. I, like, I literally can't do anything about this. <sighs> literally can't do anything about it. Um, okay. So, right. I need to get this. Throw it away. I need to get this secret. But I'm not going to be able to see anything, I don't think. Oh, it's actually, it's not that bad. It's not that dark. <gasps> Was that a one of those breaky walk tile pieces or something? I don't know. I'm freaked out. Anyway, I think we got all the secrets. Okay, so. I assume it's this way. Yeah, so this is the roots of the world tree, the one the hanging demon was hanging from. So let's set it on fire. And there's his heart, just plops right out. Wonderful. Pick that up. Go back to your slumber, son. This is but a child, and she shall not cross your mother, as you shall not cross ours. a demon yet that doesn't burn at its touch. <laughs> what was in the hole? In the... Never mind that. What on earth are you doing here? No, don't bother. We'll get onto that later. Right now, we need to get you out to somewhere safe until the morning. That's assuming you'll stay in one place, young lady. <laughs> Nothing with demons, right? Well, I can't promise anything in this godforsaken place. I light the way and go on ahead to clear out any unwelcome guests. Now, once you're out, head to the chapel over the bridge. I'll meet you there. I'm forgetting me manners. Don't speak to strange things. And if there's anything around, and trusting the skills in this area, there shouldn't be. Iron girl, use iron to repel them. See you up top. Keep your wits about you. I can't believe he's just leaving her on her own. So after picking up the heart, Lara runs through the door that just opened. She slides down a slope and finds Father Patrick in the next room, standing over an open pit from which demonic hissing and groaning can be heard. Go back to your slumberings, Father Patrick says, adding that Lara and this creature will not cross paths. The voice tells Father Patrick to come closer and that it is easy to be brave from a distance. The priest replies that he's here now and has a gift. He throws something into the pit and the creature curses and hisses. Father Patrick says he threw iron into the pit and he's never met a demon that didn't burn at its touch. Lara asks what was in the hole. Father Patrick tells her to not mind that and asks what she's doing here. He then rethinks that and says they can discuss it later. He needs to get Lara somewhere safe until morning. He says he can't promise that Lara won't encounter demons in this godforsaken place. And yeah, Lara seems a little bit scared at this point and she should be. She's 14 years old and she's like, Nowhere with demons. <laughs> the priest says he has to go ahead and clear out any unwelcome guests. Lara is to head to the chapel and he'll meet her there. He tells her not to speak to strange things and that if she encounters anything, to use iron. He tells her to keep her wits about her and then Father Patrick leaves. Now, I always thought what was in that pit 
was a mystery and we would never know what was actually supposed to be in this pit. But during my research, I found it. I found it on Tomb Raider Wiki. So, remember the hanging demon mentioned that, yeah, his heart was buried under the world tree? So the world tree, also called Yggdrasil, is the binding element of all nine worlds of the Norse universe. Supposedly, Helheim, Norse afterlife, was situated under the roots of this tree. There is a myth that a great serpent or dragon, Needhogger, gnaws at the roots of Yggdrasil. So because this tree is guarded by the dragon, Needhogger, Needhogger is the demon in the pit. So the dragon is aware of Lara taking the heart and he is not happy. And for those who don't know, my partner is Norwegian, so yes, he was standing off camera helping me pronounce all of those words, so thank you. And I think I've done it before, jumped down the pit and seen what happens. I think you literally just die, but let's just see and double check. Yeah, there's no demon down there anymore. Okay, so let's go and get to the chapel. Um, I still don't understand why Father Patrick um, just left us, but <laughs> I thought it would have been smarter to stick together. But anyway, whatever. What do I know? Okay, so this is where having iron is really important. So what Father Patrick just told us. So let's put our heart into the resting place. I don't know why that's <laughs> its resting place, but anyway. So yeah, we just heard the hanging demon laugh for some reason. And all these imps appear to annoy the hell out of us. <laughs> So this is what happens when you try and go in here without the iron clapper. Oh. Yikes. Oh my god. Okay, so basically the imps attack and Lara ends up outside the room again and that just keeps happening over and over again uh, until you use iron against them. So let's go back and get our iron clapper. Go away. Okay, now we're in business. Go away. Go away. Oh, they don't like it. <laughs> Why are those two always standing there just like going like this? <laughs> so weird. Okay, well we'll we'll just leave them to it. We won't um disturb them.
Not again. Why? Why is it constant? Constant bats. I'm not happy. Not happy with this. Okay, so that was the first level of the Ireland section called Gallows Tree. I had so much fun playing this. I do hope you enjoyed it and all of the story aspects. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough and I'll see you in the next video.